What up, players? Warboss Tay back up in this mug. Welcome to my July painting challenge appreciation video for Axe Annex Tabletop Gaming, who is an amazing participant, great guy, great YouTuber. And uh, if you have not seen him yet, check him out. I'm going to put a link below in the description. So uh, go over there, support him. Uh, you probably know who he is already. You've probably seen his videos if you've been following my challenges. If not, he just wrapped up a terrific Thanksgiving series and uh, very, very cool stuff. Uh, great guy. And uh, for his July painting challenge, he did some Relictors Terminators. So for my appreciation video, I wanted to film a tutorial on how to paint a Relictors Space Marine. Now, this is going to be a tabletop standard Space Marine. I'm going to be doing these tutorials broken up now into tabletop standard and showcase standard so uh the tabletop standard is going to be the fastest way you can get your models onto the board you could even cut some steps out of this and uh get this model painted even faster i bet you're taking a look at the runtime of the video and thinking like wow this is not going to be quick at all but that's just because i'm kind of explaining the process and taking you through every single step and uh, once you get one of these guys down you will be able to churn through them like clockwork believe me this army is not difficult to paint because your best friend is going to be this guy or any gray primer that uh, you're going to be spraying your models with this does like 80 percent of the work for you because when you're spray uh, basing your models base coating your models uh, you want a nice gray primer and uh, after that your colors are going to be as follows abaddon black i use the vallejo color black it's because I can't find my Abaddon Black, but any color black will do. The rest of the Colors Art Games Workshops, Dryad Bark, Corn Red, Lead Belcher, and that's it for the base coats. Then you've got Known Oil and some water or some acrylic thinner to do the wash then you're basically using most of the same paints again for the highlights the only two paints we're adding on and you don't even have to do this like i said is evil sun scarlet for the eyes as well as screaming skull for the insignia there now the relictors are an interesting uh, company of space marines because they do not have their own transfers they don't have uh, I think you can you can find shoulder pads for them on eBay or something, but they're I'm pretty sure they're discontinued their metal, and uh, you're gonna have to find your own transfers if you're looking to do the insignia. What I'm gonna be doing for the showcase video is I'm gonna show you how to freehand that uh, insignia, which is basically a skull in profile, but it's got the detail of you gotta make this the eyes the eye sockets as well as the teeth and everything so it's it's going to be a little bit of an uh a process and uh, i'm also going to be adding some some battle damage and then bumping up the highlights so that you can really see all of the different surfaces on the models but for a tabletop standard to get the models ready to go i would say you really won't take that long once you spray coat the mini you block out all the base colors hit it with a known oil that's all you really need to do. Everything after that is going to be working up to that showcase standard and uh, bringing everything up in your army. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please head over to Axanix uh, Tabletop Gaming's channel if you have not already subscribed to him. If you'd like to support me, the best way you can do that is by leaving a like and a comment down below, hitting that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed to my channel. Check out my Discord. The link is in the description where you can also join the community, post pictures, and uh, just communicate with... Uh, all of us there's a we've got a great community going over there on the discord and uh, i really appreciate you guys checking out this video and hope you enjoy it all right guys let's get started painting this relictor space marine so we're going to be painting him up to a battlefield standard that means that i want him to look good on the tabletop but uh, not necessarily spend the time to get too much into the details it's going to be a very simple color scheme and a very simple paint job so you can do a lot of models with this color scheme with the techniques I'm going to be showing you and uh, your best friend if you're a relictor space marine is this minus the red paint that got all over this spray can is the Citadel Mechanica standard gray model paint and it is a primer it's a colored primer that is going to spray all of your guys 
and give it that first coat of gray. Now you might wonder, but Warbust, hey, he's already very gray. Um, why don't I just paint the details like the weapon casing, the silver bits, and the gold bits? Well, because my friend, you uh, don't want bare plastic. You want to paint your models and you need a colored primer or you need a primer just to get the paint to stick to your models. And using a colored primer is gonna take one step away from the whole process. Back in the old days, when I first started painting, we didn't have a lot of colored primer. You would be lucky to get a gray primer, but you wouldn't have like the Ultramarines blue or Blood Angels red colored primers. So if you're painting a Space Marine army, which is predominantly a single color, you want to have a, a colored primer because otherwise you're gonna be spray priming your guys in white or black and then having to hand paint that base color over the entire marine. This takes out a whole step in the process, makes things a lot easier. So I'm gonna take my Space Marine out now to get sprayed with the Mechanicus Standard Gray and we will be right back once he's dry. All right, we're back and we're gonna get started with the uh, easiest step after painting or spray priming your model is painting black. So the black areas are going to be painted with, you can use Abaddon black. I couldn't find my Abaddon black. I was sure I had a pot of it somewhere, but I'm going to be using this uh, Vallejo color black. And you can use really any any color black. You don't have to use a any specific brand. This is not a, a certain color that's going to be really uh, important to be from one company or another this is literally just a black paint so I'm gonna start with the bolter casing it really does make a difference when you drill out the center of Then uh, I'm going to be painting the backs of like the joint areas. So the back of the knees. I guess knees don't really have backs, right? So the, the leg armor, if you can get into all the different uh, areas where the joints are, if not, don't worry about it. I think the most obvious ones are the elbows and the wrists and the back of the legs. So now that that is painted, I'm going to get into the shoulder pads, which is the iconic relictor's look. Their colors are gray with uh, black shoulder pads with the white skull on the inside. So I'm being real loosey-goosey too because uh, For one thing I'm having a hard time seeing the model <laughs> So um, I'll clean it up. Don't worry about it. And I just want to make sure that it's in focus for the camera But I gotta figure out how I'm gonna be able to see what I'm doing And uh, if you do make any mistakes, remember all you did was spray prime your model in Mechanicus Standard Gray. So all you need is Mechanicus Standard Gray to clean it up. And it looks really heavy. So uh, again, I'm sorry, I apologize for that. Still trying to uh, work out the angles and when you there we go <laughs> slowly but surely I will reteach myself how to paint okay so the next thing we're gonna do is paint while we're waiting for that to dry we're gonna get our lead belcher out and we're gonna be painting all of the silver bits
I'm starting with the vents on his backpack. The relictors is such an easy color scheme because there's not a lot of detail. Like you don't have different colored trim. I think unless uh, unless some of the fluff contradicts this, I think that um, they don't have different colored trim like the, the companies have in Codex Astartes Space Marines. All you really need to worry about is getting the uh, gray bits, the silver, the insignia, and then let's also do the uh, skull on the back here. Backpacks are always going to be different, especially if you've got... Oh, you know what, though? If you've got your Primaris Marines, those are going to look different, right? Because those are... They have a lot more detail than these do. These are the old school Marines. Right, I'm going to be painting the uh, little vents at the bottom of his armor. And uh, really important, it's it's very easy to overlook the tops and the fronts of these backpack vents, and that's a clear giveaway that uh, you're you're a noob. So don't don't let yourself be a noob. Paint every single angle of these vents, and uh, our bolter might still be drying. So while we wait for that, we can also paint any other metal bits. And uh, I looked up the Relictor's color scheme online and the Wikipedia says that their insignia on their, uh, their chest insignia is silver. So even though the armor is a dark gray, if you can get to that silver, uh, get that silver paint in there for the chest, that'd be really great. I'm gonna get started on the gun since we're already there. And again, if you mess up on the uh, gun casing, the bolter casing, you're just using black paint. So you just paint that uh, back over. This is very sloppy. But then again, if you're watching this video, as a uh, a guide to painting just for a beginner then uh sloppy is okay when you first start because you got to learn i learn somewhere and i gotta relearn <laughs> how to paint it's been so long okay uh it's up to you whether or not you decide to paint these little uh gaskets on the side of his helmet silver i like to just because it gives a different uh, color for the eye to be drawn to. So that's silver. And oh, I'm sorry. The camera keeps shaking because the my phone is literally in a an arm that's holding it, kind of like a tripod, but it's holding it up and over me. So I'm <laughs> having to angle my head around to to look for the right angle for the, the camera. A little behind the scenes information for you there but yeah so if, if the phone if you see the the image start shuddering and and shaking then it's probably because I bumped the tripod arm by accident just even out that shoulder pad and now I'm gonna check to make sure I didn't get any silver paint onto the casing here it looks good. Everything's looking really good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint, since I've got the black paint on my palette, I'm going to be using a larger brush to paint the uh, base. And once we've got the base painted black out of that Mechanicus Standard Gray, then uh, we, we really don't really have to worry about it for a while. Really, you don't have to really. Okay, 
have been a poet. And if you get any on his boots, whatever your basing material is, I like to start with black. I also like to use black on the rims. It's a nice, uh, like, invisible color when, when your model is all painted up. I used to do, man, I don't know if any of you remember, but in the 90s, Games Workshop was all about painting the rims of bases uh, green, goblin green at the time. And I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds great. <laughs> but it looked really bad. It looked just so, so glaring, especially if you're, if you don't have any green in the in the model or you're not playing on a, a grass table, just having green on the corn on your base rims was was not that great. And then they went to brown, I think, uh, in the early 2000s. They did like a dark brown rims on the bases. And I think at some point they went back to black. I, I think it's the nicest, most uh, elegant look. Then you can paint the top whatever you want. It could be gray or green you could put the grass or the swamp or anything but then the the edges the rims of your bases being a nice black is going to be a nice invisible uh, color make it invisible so that the model is really what focus what your eyes focus on not this bright <laughs> bright green rim okay i'm gonna let the model dry while it while i'm letting it dry i'm gonna take some that Mechanica Standard Gray and just clean up the lines on the uh, shoulder pads. And I think that's all I really messed up on. Oh, before I do, why don't we paint the pouches? So the pouches are optional. You know, you don't need to have them. And at first I was thinking, well, maybe I'll paint them in Mornfang Brown. But I think it's a little bit too warm of a color. So I'm going to see if I can find my, my Dryad Bark or my Rhinox Hide, because I think that'll be a nice, darker, richer tone for the um, pouches there. All right, I decided to go over a lot of the surface areas with Mechanica Standard Gray, just to tidy them up a little bit. And as you can see, I did tidy up some of the black and just smoothed it out and evened it out, especially on the bolter there. Once it dries a little bit more, we'll go over the uh, little insignia at the front of the gun. Maybe we'll even do it in gold just to give it a pop of color. I haven't really decided yet, but first I was able to find some triad bark. So let's paint up the pouches on his belt. Now this is a optional thing. You might not even have it if you did not build your space marines with these pouches, but I find like the new Primaris marines have a number of decorative doodads and so this is just an option if you have like straps or leather, pouches, packs, then um, dried bark is a great contrast to this dark, dark gray because it's a dark brown. It doesn't uh, pop or contrast too much. Now, while we're waiting for everything else to dry, let's get on to the islands as we're going to be using corn red. You're just going to be painting a vertical, or I'm sorry, a horizontal line across both of those eye lenses, and it will do the job really nicely. I can only see. gonna go out and fix that up and uh, we'll be back in just a sec all right I've decided after much deliberation that I'm not gonna go with gold for the winged skull on the gun I am gonna go with Balthazar gold gold ammunition these uh, bolter cases that they have in the clips are usually painted this red brassy red color which I found Balthazar gold really does a nice job we're gonna let that work for us and we're not gonna use this same color on the insignia on the guns. Instead, we are going to use nice bright gray 
in this case, we're going to use Dawnstone. This is actually the color we're going to be using to highlight up our Relictor Space Marine in the next step. But for now, it's just going to be a really nice pop of color of light color for the front of the bolter here. Yeah, it's just on the front there. So whatever your insignia is on the bolter, it could be the double-headed eagle, it could be this winged skull. I think there are a number of different decorative icons on the front of Space Marine bolters. Uh, started out with a Dawnstone and then we're going to be highlighting it up with white. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to take our known oil. We're going to shake it up so it's mixed nice and good. And then we are going to do a uh, wash on the, I guess the entire model. Why don't we just do the entire model, see where, where it goes. And then when we paint back up, we'll highlight up using uh, Mechanicus Standard Gray. And that's going to be the end of this video. So, known oil. I watered mine uh, down. It's important to use some thinner, or in, in my case, water, and uh, just make sure that you don't use it straight out of the pot and you move around these wash puddles. But we're really just using this wash to get into the shadows, the crevices, and to give us a nice depth to this gray. Gray is, I don't want to say it's a boring color, but I mean, it doesn't, it's, it's not vibrant as, you know, yellow or red. It's not going to look like your Imperial Fists or your Blood Angels. So you're going to uh, need to pull some tricks out of your hat to make your models not blend into the uh, Astro Granite <laughs> Battlefield. And I will do... Uh, I will teach you exactly how to do that. For now, you really want to just get that, get that known oil everywhere. I'm sorry, I keep, keep hitting that the phone there. I find they also like backpacks, your Space Marine backpacks. Once you hit them with the wash, like they look so much better. There's so much depth, there's so much different uh, surfaces on your Space Marine backpack. There's so much little areas where the shade can rest, like in the uh, grill up here at the top, uh, in the vents at the bottom. Just such a nice piece of paint. All right, we are going to let that sit for a little bit and then we're gonna come back once that's all dry and then we're gonna hit it with a final uh, highlight for the base here and then we'll do a, a little bit of the basing after we do the base coats, uh, touch up the base coats and then that's gonna be the end of the battlefield ready, tabletop ready Relictor Space Marine. All right, so like I said, this is a battle field tabletop ready miniature that means we're not going to get too crazy into the details if anything we're going to go just one more layer so we're talking base coat and mo honestly most of the base coat 80 percent of it is done by the mechanica standard gray itself then you're just picking out details like the silver and the black and uh the red islands and the brown pouches those are the only four other colors you're using so a really really simple way to get your model looking good and ready for the tabletop. The last thing we're gonna do for this, this uh, version of the tutorial is 
clean up some of those lines and give you a little bit of color. And we're working with our Mechanica Standard Gray. So uh, basically what we're doing is you've got the model nice and dark because of the known oil and it seeps into all the cracks and crevices. So what we're doing now with Mechanica Standard Gray is we are picking raised areas for the light to catch. So you want to get for the helmet, we're using a, this beaky helmet, but whichever helmet you use, you paint the area that's like the closest to the light source and just mix that paint or get rather get it right at where the light will be hitting the strongest. we do our job well you're not even going to notice too much if anything it's just gonna look like the known oil is more in the corners and the cracks rather than across the entire top surface of the model I'm using this palette paper uh, by game workshop but if you've got a wet palette that works just as well Anything you want to do so that you're not painting straight from the pot is going to really, really be helpful. When you're looking at the rest of the model, I usually paint the tops of the knee pads here. And if the model is uh, in whatever pose he's in, you would think that when you're turning the model around on the tabletop, the light is going to hit like the leg armor a certain way. So you just want to be consistent with where put that highlight so we're going to put it in this larger area of the leg armor and reflect it up and down the thigh armor up there and then down to where his his boot is clean up back here and the same on the other side you can kind of see too with known oil it's a little glossy, so you can see where the light hits the model and catches a little bit of that reflection. Okay, I'm being a little bit more generous with the, the highlight on that boot, but that's okay. Finally, I'm going to be painting the tops of these little backpack turbines. And that's it, I got the shoulder pad there. Oh, maybe we'll get a little bit of his hair on that side. And there you go. Now when, uh, we're only gonna do one other thing with this model, and that's we're gonna, we're gonna take our Mechanica Standard Gray, and we're going to line the black of the bolter casing. The reason we do this is so that we can see the vague outline of the bolter. So I'm taking most of the paint I put on the side of my bristles there. And what I'm going to do is just very, very lightly. In fact, you want to get rid of most of the paint. And you just very lightly drag it along the hard edge of your bolter. Ooh, messed that up. The good thing about this technique though is it's called edge highlighting because you, you're trying just to catch the edge. But if like myself, for example, if you get a little sloppy, then all you have to do is take that uh, Abaddon black or that black paint and work from the inside of the black surface area where the highlight is. And that should do it. So it's pretty simple. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to go one step further. I'm going to go a little bit higher and I'm going to use... So when, I'm, when I come back for the... Uh, 
showcase edition of this model and I, we paint on we freehand style the uh, relictors shoulder pad and we add a lot more highlighting I'm going to be using bone color as the uh, insignia color so we're gonna get it started by uh, also painting matching color onto the insignia on the bolter now you don't want it to be completely this color which is why we started with dawnstone you want a, a, a nice gray base but then we're going to be highlighting up with screaming skull So if you keep the Screaming Skull to the edges of the wing, then it'll look a little bit better. Like the light is catching the uh, tips of the wing as well as the uh, top of the bone of the skull here on the front. And it looks like I got a little bit messy there, so I'm just going to go back over with my, my black paint. Clean up the Okay, the last thing we're gonna do to touch up is we're gonna add a nice bright evil sun scarlet to the islands. So look at that, we didn't even highlight up the uh, armor. We basically just went back over it with the base coat. The only uh, new colors we added as a highlight were uh, the base coat in the upper raised areas and Mechanica Standard Gray in the, for the casing of the gun, bone color for the insignia, and then now Evil Sun Scarlet for the eye lens. And when you're painting the eye lens with this Evil Sun Scarlet, you want to basically stick to the top of the eye lens and the outside, like the corners, the top and the outside corner. You don't want to get too much of that paint in towards where the nose is. I think I got a little bit on the helmet there. So I'm gonna fix that right up there. Boom. Looks great. And there you have it, folks. You don't have to paint the base if you want to leave it uh, dark. It, it is good to have some basing material on there. And if I were you, I would actually, I would actually base this guy. And uh, I would probably use going old school with my basing colors, but I would probably use dryad bark, and then dry brush like a bane blade brown up to a bone color. Maybe add some grass. Oh yeah, you know what? Because this guy is so gray what i would do is make like he was in a jungle or in a field just to break it up you don't want it to look like he's tromping through the urban city because then he's just walking around gray rubble and then the gray rubble could blend into uh, his gray armor and then people are going to look at you and be like dude what what is going on so we don't want that we want our guy to look good we want him to look uh in like he's going through some really awesome battlefield so why don't we do that right now? Other options could be uh, if you want to paint him in, let's see, anything but urban. So like a jungle or like a field. I might not do a field, but what I could do is just like some, maybe not even a forest, but some kind of, battlefield with a lot of uh, earth we're going to keep the black rim <laughs> see if i can find my oh, here we go this is fine this will be fine gorthor brown It would be good if I had a, a dry brush. No, 
I'll probably be good if I let this first coat dry, but that's okay. We're just playing around here. And um, yeah, that's the bum I don't have my side brush. The final layer is gonna be <laughs> rack hard flesh if you can find it. If not, I think I've got my my race bone out. I don't know. Here we go. Rack hard flesh. Look at that, thinking that creativity on the spot. Yeah, it would help if it was dry, because right now it's just kind of blending in. But if you have a dry brush and you're able to get this rack art flesh just right on top of the other colors, then it'll uh, pick up pretty nicely. You don't want it to look too much like a, a sandy beach, but it'll be a nice base to uh, put some grass, maybe some flowers. Blend it all together, it'll look nice and soupy and I'm not going to glue any grass on yet. I want to uh, build it up to a nice showcase standard. But for Battlefield Ready, you guys, this is not too bad. I know this uh, tutorial took a little bit of time, but I, I wanted to show you how simple it can be. Once you get this first uh, marine painted and you figure out the process the uh, rest of your guys are really not going to take this long I mean basically all of your time is cut down because you have your Mechanicus standard gray primer and the only details you're picking out really are the silver for the gun bits and the chest crest the black for the shoulder pads and the uh, bolter casing also the silver on the backpack and then a uh, known oil and then you're just building the colors back up and then you don't even have to do the uh, bright red eye lenses or the mechanica standard gray on the casing if you don't want to if you really want to make it as simple as possible i would say just spray paint all of your marines with mechanica standard gray hit them with the known oil and then do the black and then the silver and uh, that way you can uh, get all the natural shading where it's going to be or, I mean, either way you do it. If you put the shade after you block in all the base colors or you put the shade after you spray the entire army with Mechanicus Standard Gray, you find what works best for you. And uh, personally, I've always found that working with all the base colors and then hitting it with the shades works best for me because it helps me to see what the model is uh, gonna look, look like overall before we, you hit it with the shades. Okay, that's enough rambling for me, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for checking it out. And uh, thanks again to an Annex Tabletop Gaming for uh, just being an awesome participant and just filming such great content on his channel. So thanks for watching and stay tuned because we will uh, pick up with this guy, give him some more highlights, some more uh, blingity bling. We might do some damage because the Relictors were not known for... Uh, being able to keep their gear as clean and battle ready as possible. They were uh, labeled excommunicate uh, traitorous, so uh, they were excommunicated by the Empire. That means that because they were um, delving into dark relics and chaos things, the uh, Empire said, okay, you're out, you're out, son, and then banished them into the warp. But uh, that's that's probably for the fluff videos. Basically, what that means for me is, as an artist thinking ahead to how I want to make my guys even more interesting, I would add some battle damage and some rust or some grime. Not a lot, 
but uh, stay tuned to see how I'm going to do that in the showcase video. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you can, click that like button. Leave me a comment down below. It's been so long, and uh, I know there's still some kinks I'm going to be working out with this whole uh, setup, but I'm really happy to be getting back into it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we will see you in the next one. Latest players!